Good afternoon, colleagues. Let me present to you a presentation on monitoring of stress strain state and steel oil storage tanks. Features of strain gauges, transducers application and severe environment. Safety is the most important factor in the process of designing buildings and structures. However, at the stage of their construction there are many deviations from the design project that cause a variety of defects, including those of technogenic nature, which may lead to structural failure and consequently to human injuries slash fatalities. Urgent issues arising during the construction and CTEC support of complex engineering structures, steel oil storage tanks in our case, involve the assessment and monitoring of the stress strain state of these structures and the analysis of the behavior of load bearing structural elements at all stages of their life. Normative documents provide methods for detecting and predicting the influence of defects on the stress strain state of such objects. The main methods include technical inspection of load-bearing structures and mathematical simulation of their stress-strain state on the basis of the measurements obtained. Such approaches, as being most acceptable from the viewpoint of the reliability of the results, are reflected in building regulations. Besides, further development of measurement instruments and mathematical simulation methods by means of complex software packages permits the elaboration and application of new methods for evaluating the stress-strain state of complex structures such as oil tanks. In this paper, we address the problem of evaluating the stress-strain state of a vertical steel oil tank with defects that have a rather complicated and non-trivial history of appearance and development. The problem is solved through the mathematical simulation of the stress-strain state of the examined construction and during the experimental investigation of the behavior of the structural elements. We consider a vertical steel oil tank of loading capacity of 50 hundred cubic meter that is a vertical cylinder or shell with an internal diameter of 20.92 meter and a height of 14.9 meter. The tank wall is made by welding together steel strip panels. The tank bottom is made of two steel sheets with ring edges. The roof of the tank is a framed roof of conical shape and is made of 16 panels. The roof deck consists of four sheets. The foundation of the tank is a monolithic reinforced concrete ring of 2.08 meter width and 0.3 meter height, an inner diameter of 18.84 meter, reinforced with space frames, the main elements of which are flat reinforcing meshes. The tank was installed with significant deviations from the design project so that the tank shell lost its original cylindrical shape. In an attempt to eliminate imperfections caused by such poor installation, the following works were undertaken, repair of welded seams through cutting, stretching and further welding, replacement of a certain part of the tank wall, repair of the tank wall and replacement of its two sections. However, these repairing works did not yield the required results, and even produced new defects and deviations from the design documents. These deviations from the design parameters registered after the end of all repairing and assembling works did not allow us to put the tank into operation. Therefore, it was decided to investigate the causes of defect formation and their influence on the stress-strain state of the structure in order to find out whether the restored tank could withstand further operating loads. Analysis of the stress-strain state of the structure was performed in several stages. At the first stage, reliable information on the current state of the tanks was obtained. For this purpose, the construction documentation and the engineering and geological survey data on the area where the tank should be located, the characteristics of the ground constituting the tank foundation, were studied. In addition, a visual inspection of the object and a tachymetric survey of the tank shell were performed. The tachymetric surveying was done to determine the location of the tank walls and plane. Using the results of this survey, the deviations from the cylindrical shape of the tank shell and plan were localized. These defects were mainly of a sinusoidal form, alternating deviations of the wall position and plan. This technique also allowed us to detect the deviations of the tank walls from the vertical axis and the deviations of the high altitude positions of the edge of the tank bottom plate from the standard positions. It has been found that the planned high altitude position of the tank wall exceeds the maximum permissible deviations from the vertical axis specified in the accompanying documents state standard specification. The results of the tachymetric surveys are given in figure number 4.
The second stage involved mathematical modeling of the tank foundation ground base system and analysis of the calculated results. The calculations were done by the finite element method using the software package ANSI Structural 12.1. Numerical finite element models were developed on the basis of the results of the above survey. For a solution of the problem, we defined three types of the models, elastic material models, which take into account the correct design installation of the tank and the absence of any deviations from its original form. Elastic material models, which take into account the real installation of the tank assessed through visual observation and its deviations from the original shape registered at the time. Elastic plastic material models, which take into account the real conditions of the tank actual assessed using the results of up to the minute analysis and its deviations from the original shape registered at the time. The static and dynamic load combinations were analyzed, a long-term oil storage, b standard operating mode of this object. The tank under study is a commercial or transfer tank for petroleum products. During the operation, it experienced cyclic loads caused by periodic filling and emptying. We constructed the mathematical model of the tank with an emphasis on the defects detected at the first stage of our investigation. The areas with such defects were modeled using a fine grid. And increasing the level of discretization of the examined part of the model. A comparative analysis of the results obtained for different types of models was carried out using the obtained results, Table 1, Figures number 6 and 7. It is seen that equivalent stresses are distributed more equally over the walls of the structure with buckling compared to the tank of an ideal shape. Under static loading conditions, there is an insignificant excess of permissible stresses near the welded seams, whereas the rest of the surface of the tank does not experience significant, compared to limit values, stresses. Under dynamic loading, the first five load and load cycles of the tank were considered under the assumption that the tank was initially subjected to Massachusetts forces. It has been found that already during the first loading cycles the plastic, residual, deformations of the zones with buckling reach a certain value and do not grow and the elastic component amplitude remains unchanged. This means that within such conceptual framework, defects are treated as a shape curvature. The cyclic loading of the tank wall does not lead to an irreversible deformation of the wall at the place where the stress exceeds the design resistance of the steel. Qualitative and quantitative analysis of the calculated results provides evidence that the proposed model can be used to reveal the reliability margin of the examined structure even when taking into account the observed deviations of the tank shape from the design variant. Prediction of the strain rate under varying operating conditions is valid too within the model assumptions concerning the initial stress-strain state of the tank to be verified experimentally. Logically, the next step to the problem solution is the performance of a full-scale experiment accompanied by further verification of the developed models. Hence, the outcome of the second stage is a decision about the necessity to perform an appropriate experiment. During the third stage, a full-scale hydro test experiment was organized and performed. For this purpose, a test program was elaborated, the locations of the measurement points and deformation limits were determined, and a number of preparatory works were carried out to ensure the accuracy of measurements and the uninterrupted automatic gathering of data on the stress-strain state of the structure. Control over the stress-strain state of the tank wall was carried out for three zones. The first zone is a calm zone or section where no buckling is present. In this section, according to the calculated models, the stress level does not exceed the value corresponding to the normal operation of the structure at 315 Ampere. Two other zones, zones with buckling, are located opposite each other in the zones of vertical welded seams. The choice of points and measurement zones is caused by the results of tachymetric surveys. The calculation models have shown that in the free zone the maximum stresses are present in the lower rings of the tank and they decrease with increasing height. As figure 10 indicates, near the welded seams the maximum horizontal deviation happens at a height of 6 8 m. Based on these results, sensor locations were determined, figures 10 and 11. Strain gauge type sensors, separately designed on the basis of four constant and strain gauges assembled in a full bridge, were located at 32 control points. 
Two strain gauges were used to measure the longitudinal deformation, TAR-1 and TAR-3, and the other two for thermocompensation, TAR-2 and TAR-4. Potentiometer P1 is needed to balance the bridge. For ease of installation, the sensors were assembled on a textilite board. Compensating strain gauges were glued to the steel plate, which was connected to the board as well. The plate had a hole to contact with the tank wall through the thermal interface kiptate. All the sensors were tested on a calibration beam and in a climatic chamber in order to check temperature compensation using the plate made of steel. The sensors were glued to the previously prepared surface of the tank wall using a cyanocrylate adhesive. Surface preparation involves grinding of the part of the tank wall to a smooth surface, which should be free from corrosion products and ensure the best adhesion. The strain gauges were connected via the six-wire circuit to the input signal units of the firm oven. The measurement error of this device is 0.05%. The modules were combined via two common R's 485 buses and connected to the PC. In order to minimize the distortion of the sensor signal, the input signal units were located in close proximity to the strain control points and connected with shielded cables. The measuring equipment was also protected against moisture and dust. The equipment was interrogated using open SCADA packages, DB and 8Os. The choice of these software products is determined by two factors, a software programs are distributed freely and b the OPCA server software provided by the survey module vendor is not able to pull more than one channel per device with the available four channels at the time of creation of the data collection system. The 21-day experiment was performed under the supervision of the contracting authority in compliance with the standards method of full-scale tensimetry. In addition, a safety work cycle was carried out. The tank was inspected for cracks and other defects. Also, the operator exercised mimic diagram control over of the values of deformation recorded at the examined joints. Tests were carried out according to the plan described in Table 2. At the beginning of the experiment, the jump signals were registered at a height of more than 5 m. This is due to the fact that the examined zones of the tank took an equilibrium shape under hydrostatic pressure. In the mid-stage of the experiment, the strain values in these joints were normalized, and the absence of sharp increments was registered. This, among other things, has led to the conclusion that the recorded zones of local buckling are the zones where the part of the tank shell loses its local stability, which cannot be reflected in the mathematical model and is, in turn, the most important factor in assessing the initial stress-strain state of the structure. After gathering and analyzing the results of the experimental study, the following conclusions can be drawn. Throughout the experiment, no critical strain value specified in normative and design documents was exceeded in any structural element, joint, which agrees well with the calculated results. The results of mathematical modeling second stage performed taking into account the characteristics of defects correlated with the in-situ measurements taken at all examined points. Correlation of the water level in the tank with the level of deformations at points along the shell height is traced. The results are consistent with the mathematical simulation data determined for the design version of the tank. The values of deformation at the very beginning of measurements and at their end differ within the measurement error. No strain accumulation was observed at all 32 measurement points. The tank returned to its original state, which was confirmed by calculations. The safety factor of the completely filled tank varied, according to the test schedule, within 7% to 50%. It is worth noting that the safety factor less than 10% was detected only for one joint of zone 3. At most points, the stress level did not exceed the value corresponding to the normal operation of the structure specified in the normative documents and obtained through mathematical simulations. Hence, it can be concluded that the behavior of the tank wall predominantly follows an elastic scenario, not going to plasticity. Analysis of the results of the study has indicated that the available normative documents referred to mathematical modeling of the stress-strain state of buildings and structures cover, with sufficient accuracy, all possible states of the model objects. The exact causes of certain defects are often unknown and therefore the elucidation of mechanisms responsible for defect formation requires a large amount of calculations. 
In this work, we have developed and tested an algorithm for estimating and measuring the condition of a structure, which allows one to save time and money needed to accurately determine the stress-strain state of the model objects. The need for such techniques is indisputable because more and more technological devices, e.g., sensors and data communications equipment, appear on the market every day. Thank you for your attention.